Okay. Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you to this webinar on CLC Genomics Workbench 20, Scalable Desktop Software for NGS Data Analysis. Uh, my name is Leif Schauter. I'm a Director of Product Management of Genome Analysis in Kyogen, and I have a PhD in Plant Molecular Genetics from Aarhus University, which is located in Denmark. Um, after a PhD, I went for a postdoc postdoctoral training in Norwich in the UK, um, and then I came back uh, to become professor in bioinformatics at Aarhus University. Um, in 2013, I joined the company in, in Aarhus that is called CLC Bio, uh, which was uh, acqu acquisitioned by Kayagen just two months after I joined, and I've been here since. Um, so today I wanted to tell you a little bit about, about the new capabilities we have developed uh, in the workbench, but before I do that, I wanted to shortly leave a disclaimer and uh, share the agenda with you. Um, so I will introduce the COC Genomics Workbench uh, and focus on what's new in the workbench. Um, I will also talk about a new uh, release plugin for long read support, uh, which is for Oxford Nanopore reads and PacBio reads. Um, I will also present the, the roadmaps for this year's development, uh, which we will release end of the year or next year. And then I will uh, demo the software for you and how to run how to uh, how to run the software and what the user interface looks like, um, how to install and run tools from the plugins and modules, uh, how to batch analysis if you have many samples, and how to control workflows. Um, so the CLC uh, Genomics Workbench has been around for many years, like it was the first uh, commercial software for NGS analysis, so we've been working on this for 15 years or more. Um, and what it basically does is it is a, a cross-platform desktop genomics application with a graphical user interface. So it has a user-friendly interface. Uh, it has a lot of interactive visualizations to facilitate analysis, and it has uh, many ready-to-use and customizable workflows that allow you to automate processing of fast queue files, and you can share these uh, workflows with your colleagues in the, uh, all, all over the world. It has a modular design, so the core is shipped as the genomics workbench, and a lot of additional functionality can be loaded into the workbench through the plugins, uh, depending on your special interest. Um, it's uh, developed under quality uh, control of ISO certified by, by the German authorities, um, and then um, it works on Windows, uh, Mac, and Linux and supports most sequencing platforms. So that's uh, Illumina, iTorrent, Oxford Nanopore, Pacific Biosciences, and the BGI, MGI um, sequencing. It's uh, scalable to enterprise-wide support deployment. Uh, so we have software for that also I will present to you. And finally, the uh, Capabilities are fully documented and also supported. So I will start with the enterprise solutions um, because that's maybe one of the key features that is often missed uh, when, when we present the software. But actually, we are fully scalable to, to uh, enterprise-wide and also institutional-wide, so the whole, whole uh, Institute of a university can can subscribe to a server if they have a if they have some hardware in the background. So this uh, hardware is uh, then the um, the server infrastructure or the high performance compute uh, of of your institute, and you would access that through the server software. And the server software comes with two kinds of clients. One of them are the workbenches and another 
client is the command line tools. So bioinformaticians then uh, can, can access uh, directly the tools from the command line if they want to do that. Uh, you can enlarge the server with, uh, with the plugins and with also external applications uh, if you have such. can be anything of, of freeware or commercial software, third parties. Um, the second enterprise solution that we have uh, launched more recently and uh, are ramping up on is uh, called the, the CLC Genomics Cloud Engine which uh, works by uh, deploying the local um, clients uh, that could be the server through or the, or the workbenches or the command line and then directly interact with your cloud instance at Amazon Web Services. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's pretty powerful because it allows you to bypass the whole IT department uh, and the costs that come with uh, maintaining a, a high computing facility. And the scale is exactly as your demand grows. So that was just a, a short introduction to the enterprise levels. Um, now I want to talk about the uh, Workbench and its plug plugin application. So the Workbench contains all the classical molecular biology tools that you may already know from the main Workbench that we also have as a product. And all of those are included in the, in the Genomics Workbench. Um, you can do uh, your Fast Q, uh, retrimming and pre-processing of NGS data, just like any other pipeline out there. Um, we have a uh, large capability for RNA-seq, uh, differential expression and statistical analysis, and also extendable to small RNA, take data and, and microRNA. Um, we have uh, the capability to detect novel transcripts, and we are very good at, at, at the novo assembly of both genomes, metagenomes, metatranscriptomes, metavirums, whatever. Um, you can uh, generate, annotate, and uh, compare uh, high confidence variant costs for, for biomedical purposes, for example, but also for virus outbreak uh, to, to call uh, SNPs. Um, you can do epigenetic analysis on NGS data. Uh, and if you happen to be a Kayasek uh, panel customer, then we have an extensive suite of tools for that in the biomedical uh, genomics plugin. Mm. We also interface with uh, uh, tertiary analysis tools such as IPA, which is ingenuity pathway analysis, and QCI, which is and clinical insights for variant interpretation. Um, there's a easy management of reference data. So if you are working with uh, any uh, organism, especially human, mouse, and rats, we have extensive collections of reference data that are downloadable with, with one or two clicks. Um, there's an advanced uh, workflow control that uh, you are given uh, to, to uh, contain, to, to control your, your advanced workflows. And uh, I will show them in, in, a, in a few slides. Um, with the biomedical uh, plugin especially, but also with the microbial plugin, there come uh, an, an extensive collections of ready to use workflows that are uh, optimized for the purpose at hand. Um, and then in the microbial genomics analysis plugin, there's a vast uh, amount of microbiome and clinical microbiology analysis tool at your disposal. Um, let's click a, a short view here on the toolworks, how that is organized. Um, you can see the, they, are, they are organized by folders that uh, are then named by the overarching theme of, of the tools in that folder. Um, so the first couples are for non-NGS data, example, multiple sequence alignment, phylogenetics, 
cloning tools, Sanger sequencing, and so on. Um, the track tools are really uh, what one could call a, a genome browser or genome viewer, and all the accessory tools that uh, make it easy to work with. Um, the prepare sequencing data are then the, the QC tools for an NGS, um, the trimming tools and the demultiplexing facility. Um, then you have resequencing analysis and RNA-seq and small RNA, microRNA, epigenomics, de novo, and, uh, and installed workflows. And these are application-specific uh, tools um, that are populated uh, some of them are populated already uh, when you download the work the workbench, and others get populated when you um, download specific plugins. Okay, and utility tools allow you to process your uh, your your um, objects in, in in the workbench. You can rename, you can sample reads, you can extract reads from certain areas in your genome browser, and so on. And then the legacy tools are tools that will be retired in the next version, just to give a fair warning. Um, so that was the, the, way, the workbench as it comes. If you want to extend the capabilities of the workbench, you can do that by installing and downloading a, a lot of different plugins. Uh, we have uh, a few commercial plugins where you have to license uh, the mainly used one is the microbial genomics module, which is useful for strain typing, epidemiology, and antimicrobial resistance analysis. Um, you can do a metagenomic community profiling and assemble and functional analysis with that tool. Um, it has functional analysis tools and uh, pre-built and user-customizable uh, databases. And it, integrated support for a, a specific uh, Kayasek 16X IDS panel. The genome finishing module allows you to automate and uh, manually uh, finish your genomes uh, and, and polishing. Um, so that could be, for example, plasmids uh, or uh, smaller genomes like, like yeast genomes if you, if you don't get them uh, finished in the first iteration, then there are a lot of tools for primer design and, and polishing uh, at later stages. Um, that comes with uh, integrated support for PacBio and Illumina hybrid assembly and finishing. Um, so for the free plugins, we have the biomedical genomics analysis uh, plugin that has all the workflows for human, mouse, and rat. Um, then we just launched the long read support plugin. I will show you that also in a moment. Um, we have a whole genome alignment plugin, which is still in beta, but uh, can be used to uh, align uh, hundreds of uh, bacterial genomes or dozens of uh, niche size genomes um, for synteny uh, monitoring. Um, then there's upload to uh, the I. PA and IVA, um, but this requires subscriptions of those uh, capabilities with the Ingenuity backend in order to be useful. Um, we also have two third-party plugins, um, which are provided by third parties, so blast to go and MetaGeneMark. Um, I want to um, go into depth with a couple of these capabilities from the plugins where the biomedical genomics analysis is maybe the one you would uh, want to if you're working with mouse and uh, rat and humans. Um, these have uh, a lot of uh, workflows that are standard in, in, the, in the field for oncology, but also for hereditary uh, um, workflows. So you can see family of three, family of four, and so on. They are, they are in here. Um, for, for somatic oncology, it's uh, two more normal samples, and and, uh, and they are all uh, slightly different in what they 
use for variant calling, the different variant callers, and also what they use for filtering that is very uh, specific to the purpose at hand. Um, in that biomedical genomics analysis plugin, there's also a launch uh, facility for Kyasec panel analysis. Um, so here you have uh, seven, eight tabs for different types of Kyasec panels. Some are for DNA, others are for RNA. And then the newest one is multimodal, which is a new panel that is both targeting RNA and DNA. And these work with ion torrent data as well as for Illumina data. And uh, you can go with the uh, panels that are off the catalog, of the shelf, or you can add in the custom panels that you have had designed with, uh, with, uh, with Kyogen. Uh, um, team job. The other panel, uh, sorry, the other module I would like to talk about is the uh, uh, microbial genomics module, um, where you have the tools for strain typing and epidemiology, so taxonomic identification, um, MLST typing. We have recently edited edit the, the core genome and whole genome MLST. Um, there's a lot of content coming with this module in the form of the antimicrobial resistance detection, which is the most comprehensive collection at this point. Um, uh, and also a, a large number of tools, uh, so I think three different ways to, to assess whether there's uh, any antimicrobial resistance in your sample. Um, and then finally, uh, Outbreak tracing capabilities like uh, stick trees or uh, minimum spanning trees. And we have both of those. Um, and you can overlay a rich amount of, state of metadata on these to, to really trace your outbreak. For uh, metagenomics, we have the classical 16S IPS amplicon based microbiome profiling. And we also have um, whole genome shotgun metagenomics that allow you to do taxonomic profiling just on the on the whole genome shotgun reads. Um, there is a de novo assembly of those uh, metagenomic samples and gene level functional profiling. You can uh, then annotate your gene findings with the best blast hit, uh, best diamond hit, or with uh, PFAM domains. Um, and it's very easy to get uh, high quality reference data through this uh, module. So I mentioned the reference data manager, which uh, allows you to um, repopulate uh, your reference uh, manage your reference data just by clicking on uh, selecting and clicking on uh, uh, the reference data you are most interested in and downloading it. Um, to your uh, hard disk. And for panels, we uh, support, uh, we, we offer a wide variety of, of uh, panel specific bed files that go with the workflows that uh, we, I just showed you. So, what did we do um, for this release? Um, first, we uh, have already had this functionality or this concept of batching where you can iterate uh, and execute uh, workflows over all input files. Um, so that's uh, an old one and based on the main functionality that we have upgraded in the latest release. And we have done so by allowing you to batch over multiple inputs. So before it was only one kind of input. Now you can have multiple inputs to to uh, to batch over, uh, iterate in the same workflow. For example, you can map several read map uh, several read uh, fastq files to uh, several uh, references, and you can match them up uh, by specifying uh, this in metadata that controls them 
the um, batching. So um, that's the iterate over several inputs governed by metadata. You can on the fly import NGS data, so you can start directly from FastQ uh, before you had to first import the read uh, to the workbench. Um, you can now export both as PDF, that's always been the case, but now you can also uh, export reports in a machine readable format called JSON, which then allows you to take that structured output and uh, process with your favorite, uh, you know, text processing tool, it could be R or something else. Um, we also um, released the ability to combine many reports into a single report. So that's also a, a request that we've had for many years to have that capability. So I've, I've drawn an example workflow here of an RNA stack, a pipeline where you would use all of these capabilities. Uh, so now you can do RNA-seq in a single workflow, uh, starting with uh, many samples that iterate over the conditions that are specified in the metadata, could be time, could be drug treatment, or a combination of both. Um, you can then uh, combine the quantitation of these uh, RNA-seq mappings and make pairwise comparison uh, all against all and all against reference as, as you like. And again, uh, as governed by the metadata, you can export results as uh, PDF or JSON, um, and you can combine the all of the intermittent results into a single report to very quickly get, a, get an overview of which samples have uh, not performed or which step has been critical and so on. So here's an example of the iterate uh, workflow control element. There are two workflow control elements we've added to the collection of um, workflow control elements. One is called iterate, the other one is collect and distribute. And so here I'm showing the iterate. In this example, you would take several uh, FastQ files and map to several references, and that can be specified in, in the metadata. Um, sorry. Yes. Um, here, here I show how to uh, specify that in the in the metadata. So the metadata for the samples matches up to Salmonella or Neisseria. And the metadata of the references matches the Salmonella and Neisseria to the reference genomes. So that way, the uh, functionality of this new workflow element is fully aware of what to match with what. Um, for the collect and distribute workflow control element, uh, you need to provide a comma separated list of terms in the output field um, that define the number of output channels and their names. And then after selecting the input, the batch unit and the collect unit must be specified using a metadata table. So you can see again, this is making heavy, heavily use of the metadata, which may be a little uh, different from how you usually use the workbench, but we strongly encourage you to uh, to, uh, to use these uh, capabilities as they are really powerful if you are scaling up your research, which was the headline of last year's development, enabling uh, scaling up of research. Um, the metadata table are really easy to um, construct, so you can either do that within the workbench or you can simply do that in your favorite uh, a program Excel, for example, and just import it from there and, and create a metadata table. And then link it to the data and to the algorithms that you want to use with that. Um, the combined reports tool is also new, as I mentioned earlier. 
and uh, you can set it up as you want. Uh, re reports can, original, can originate from one sample. So if one workflow has many steps and create many reports, you can create this report of reports or combined reports on that one sample from all those steps so you quickly get an overview. Um, but you can also do it for several samples in one report so that you can quickly spot outliers and, and, and uh, deviant samples. Um, summary information is shown as plots. Um, and um, uh, it includes tables for outliers. So this is what it looks like. You have the overview table. Um, this is a GC content of a number of samples. Um, and then you can also have the summary plot view um, that just shows you how, where the outliers are. And the outliers, by the way, are also colored yellow in the first um, table. And then in the summary table, you, you get uh, everything summarized. So iterate and combine report. In this uh, workflow, the RNA-seq analysis tool can be run once per sample. And here, at the same time, as creating a single combined report for a whole batch of samples. So that's uh, very useful in certain scenarios where you typically have 12 or 20 input files and, and you don't want to look through 10 or 20 reports or maybe even many more because the, for every sample you may generate several reports as part of the workflow. In this case, it's only one. We also released uh, other products so this was the January release, uh, sorry, the December release, where we uh, released uh, the main workbench, the CLC genomics workbench, and the biomedical genomic analysis plugin. Uh, and for the main workbench, we released a biomolecule generator tool to generate or extract biomolecules based on symmetry information in PDB files. Um, you can also use a tool now that um, does homology modeling of a sequence and um, the molecule structure in a molecule, molecule project can be exported to a PDB file uh, with, with the new functionality. So these are um, protein um, structure capabilities that uh, we have included in the main workbench on the now. So already talked about the genomics workbench improvement. Let's go, skip that. Um, for the biomedical genomics analysis plugin, we have uh, added uh, three uh, new uh, panels support for kaya sec panels. Uh, one of them is the multimodal panel. And the second one is the kaya sec Fusion XP, which includes uh, variant calling, fusion detection, and expression quantification. And fusion, a detected fusion is, is shown in the figure. And finally, we have uh, released the targeted methylation analysis capability for a Kyasec panel that with the same name. The microbial genomics module has uh, released um, strain typing improvements so that you now can do uh, core genome and whole genome analysis. And with that, we have uh, released uh, minimum spanning trees visualization of the MLSC data. And that's what's shown in this uh, graph. And we have updated the antimicrobial resistance with integration into public databases and content curations. So especially the, the CARD uh, database has been added. Um, in January, so just uh, a month ago, we released the TLC Long Read Support Plugin. And this is a new plugin that targets um, the 
Tech Bio users and the Oxford Nanopore users. So you can now map these long reads to reference. You can de novo assemble uh, with long and short reads. You can polish with Illumina reads. You can correct long reads um, and you can use long reads as contexts, as scaffolds for Illumina assembly. So these are five different tools that uh, come as part of this plugin and can be used in, in, in workflows. Uh, these are mini workflows here, but you can build more, build more complex ones. Um, the roadmap for, for COC in 2020, what we will do this year is to uh, continue our work on long read support. So hopefully we will get to do long assemblies, maybe even for diploid species uh, and for uh, we'll support microbiome uh, metagenome analysis for taxonomic profiling and, and, and that kind of assemblies. Um, we will do various uh, user experience updates to make it more um, user friendly. Um, then we have a big project on single cell analysis where we want to go from FastQ files uh, to uh, to TSNE plots and, and allow the customers to do clustering on those. Um, we will up introduce a couple of uh, new uh, Kayatec panel support. Uh, one is for the T cell repertoire, um, T cell receptor repertoire analysis, and the other one is for uh, human exome panels. Um, on the cloud side, we will give users directly access from the workbench to base space, to the base space accounts. Um, and finally, uh, we will introduce a paper sample CLC analysis in the cloud, uh, Kyogen hosted. So in summary, I have uh, presented to you the workbench and its features, an overview of the toolbox. Um, I have shown what's new in, in, the, in the latest release, um, how to do on the fly import from FastQ how to batch over multiple inputs. Um, I've shown the new control elements, iterate and collect and distribute. I've presented the combined reports tool, um, export of data as JSON, the long read analysis support plugin, and uh, the roadmap for 2020. So this is the workbench once you've opened it. Its uh, main area is this uh, workbench area where we have uh, pre-filled uh, items that help you with quicker and easier onboarding. Um, if it's the first time you're here or you open it after a longer while absence, you can open the welcome center, which will display the new features and uh, new tutorials and, and, and whatnot that we have um, published over the last few months. Uh, you can quickly get started on your um, favorite topic that could be uh, variant calling, uh, resequencing, de novo assembly, expression, epigenetics, or in anything that you are particularly interested in. Um, then we have uh, access to tutorials here and the manual here. Otherwise, the data is in a Windows-like folder structure here where you can view what what is uh, in your workbench instance uh, on, on the data front. You can pre-fill the ex example data by going to help and then say import example data and it will uh, copy for you from the from our uh, Kyogen homepage this uh, small set of, of example data so that you can get started. Um, in the toolbox, you have all the tools that are available to you uh, in a folder structure that uh, is uh, logically uh, adhering to uh, what the intention of these tools is. 
So for classical sequence analysis, for example, you would have uh, alignment and trees, um, general sequence alignment analysis, uh, nucleotide analysis, um, protein analysis, and, and protein structure, and so on for all the other uh, tool collections in the workbench. Um, here you can create new CLC objects um, that could be folders uh, or adapter lists or metadata tables, uh, but you can also import these by clicking import. If you have them from uh, an Excel file, for example, you can very easily import metadata from, from an Excel file that you have on your desk on your drive. Um, you can also import all kinds of reads, uh, Oxford Nanopore, Illumina, and tracks is for the primer and bed files uh, that come with many panels. Uh, for specific panels and primer pairs, there's also specialized support down here. Um, you can export all kinds of objects in different formats. The latest support that uh, I mentioned in the slide deck before is the JSON um, that uh, is a machine readable format that from your reports. Um, you can again launch your favorite uh, tools from the rocket icon. Uh, simply start typing what you want to do, say uh, local realignment, um, then uh, you can get the tool here and double click on it. Uh, you can decide where to run it and uh, it will ask you for input data and, and parameters. And if you're not sure how to set those parameters or if you would like to understand how, what the defaults mean, you can ask the help button to bring you to the exact location in the manual uh, and which describes this step. Over here we have um, manager tools. Uh, one is the plugin manager, which uh, will populate a list for you if you're online with all the plugins that are available for you that uh, exactly match the version of the workbench that you have and you can download and install these. Some of them will be commercial and, and cost you another license and others will be for free. And they extend the functionality of the workbench vastly. So these are the plugins then that you have already installed. Um, so you can disable them or uninstall them and then reinstall them from here if there's a new update. Um, you can quickly manage your reference data here, uh, depending on what organisms you're working with. There's a long range of uh, pre-selected species for you that uh, give you access to both the sequence, but also the annotations and, and variants, if that's of interest to you. We also have um, collections that we maintain, uh, which are more specialized to certain workflows that we provide, for example, in the in the biomedical space, there's a lot of human um, sets that are um, pre-populated with both the sequence, but also the annotations and uh, resources that uh, are, are very handy to have in the workflows for filtering out uh, population variants or, or something like that. Um, here you have uh, a download facility for um, short read archive access or for, for downloading sequences from NCBI uh, directly into your workbench. And finally here is the workbench manager, sorry, the, the workflow manager that allows you to uh, design new workflows um, so you can add elements by either selecting them from here um, or by um, 
dragging them in from 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 this one uh, the toolbox um, map reads for example sorry map reads to reference so then you can uh, connect uh, things to each other and um, make a quick workflow here that would do the retrimming and the uh, mapping to the reference and give you a, a track of that that you can view in the genome browser afterwards um, so that's uh, a quick way to make your custom-made bioinformatics pipeline if you want to have uh, workflows that uh, we provide for you, um, you can go into this uh, ready to use workflow, for example, and uh, take your favorite, uh, say you want to identify variants when whole genome sequencing, you can uh, open a copy of this workflow and uh, inspect the elements. What, what is it actually doing for you and what are the settings of the parameters? You can, you can see that by double clicking on the tool and then uh, uh, going to the uh, configure panel. And again, you can click the help menu if you, if you are looking for specifics on, on the parameters. Okay, um, then uh, one of the more specialized uh, functionalities for those of you who work uh, with the Kayasek panel is uh, this um, So we have a number of resources that uh, where you can find more information. Uh, the main one is the CLC Genomics Workbench homepage. Uh, and then you can find uh, a number of uh, tutorials, manuals, and, and frequently asked questions that will get you started, especially that uh, tutorial and get started with uh, CLC Genomics Workbench. It could be very useful. Um, you can have a, an overview of the plugins either from within the software if you have already obtained that or from this home page uh, lists all the plugins that are available and finally keep an eye on our blog and maybe subscribe to it because that's where we um, you know show off our new capability at any time Okay, so um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to submit these to the uh, chat box and I will answer them. And if we have more questions than the time allows, then I will email the answers to you uh, by uh, after the presentation. <clears throat> so, 
Okay, so first question, do you have a support organization and is there an option for purchasing tailored bioinformatics solutions? Um, yes, uh, thanks for that question. Indeed, we have a support organization based in Denmark, California and India. So they're operating 24-5 uh, um, and you can easily contact them by email from within the software and they will get back to you with competent guidance very fast. And for Tailored offerings, we have a dedicated team performance, performing what we call managed services across the Kyogen Digital Insight portfolio. If you want, for example, to extend the functionality of CLC or have a cloud hosted solution of a complete fast queue to Insight bioinformatics solution, then we can certainly do that. Okay, here's another question. I have used CLC main workbench while at university before. Is that a completely different product? Um, so, as I think I said in the beginning, uh, we, we have the main workbench also as a, as a product uh, which contains the in silico cloning tools, uh, primer design, Sanger sequencing handling, multiple sequence alignment, phylogenetic tree building, etc. Um, so, you can say this is our entry level product. Uh, the CLC Genomics Workbench has the main workbench functionality 100% included, in addition to all the NGS handling tools. So the Genomics Workbench is the analysis workhorse, workhorse and the powerful tool for smaller labs. And if you want to then go uh, enterprise-wide, we have the server and the cloud engine. But the look and feel and the tools and the workflows and algorithms are shared between these uh, software levels. So here's a question. What is the licensing model for CLC Genomics Workbench? Mm. So we just shipped it uh, from perpetual license to actually subscription license that makes these products much cheaper. So we have an annual subscription license that you can subscribe to. Um, and there's two types of those. One is the desktop license, which are locked to a single machine. And uh, the other type are network licenses, which are floating in the network and can be checked out by individual users at any machine in the network. And you can uh, borrow a license from the network if you go on a field trip, for example. Okay, here's a question. How does our software, your software, compare to offerings by other vendors of freeware? Mm, that's a good question. So, CLC has been a first mover in this space of user friendly desktop software for NGS analysis. But in the last five years, we've seen many copycat offerings in the commercial space, uh, but none of them is anywhere as comprehensive as CLC. Uh, now, for some cloud vendors, uh, they still require command line scripting um, where our CLC cloud engine combines uh, the, the usability of the, of the uh, workbench with the power of the cloud engine. So, no, no, no command line scripting is required there. Um, second part of the question for freeware, um, so that's uh, thousands of tools out there, um, you know, developed by universities and research institutes around the world. Um, but none of them has, uh, has managed to deliver a comprehensive, user-friendly and easy to install and deploy a desktop solution. So these are typically command line tools, uh, collections of those that are maintained in GitHub and and distributed in GitHub. So you really need a, a Linux specialist uh, in your team to install and maintain these products. Uh, and in addition, then the documentation remains fragmented and you will have uh, very, very sparse uh, random support. So that's the main difference. 